everybody. Welcome back to lunch um, at my house. Today we're gonna make some cauliflower fried rice. Um, it's nothing, it's, it's been around for a while now, but a lot of people that I've talked to lately told me they don't know how to make it. So it's something we make pretty often in the Zep house and so I figured I'd show you how it's done. It's a really fast, really nutritious, really delicious recipe that can, um, can hit the table in less than 20 minutes. So let's get started. Uh, the first thing you want to do is turn on your pan, right? Can't cook unless you got a hot pan. So we're just going to start that up right here. Okay. I got that on like a medium, medium high heat there. Just going to let my pan heat up for a second. We want it to have a nice hot surface to cook that cauliflower with um, whenever we get it all shredded. So that's the next step. While my pan is heating, I took a head of cauliflower and I just cut it into a bunch of big chunks. I don't have to be too neat and tidy because I'm actually going to shred it in my food processor. All right, this is just a regular food processor that I fitted with the, um, can you see it there, with the grater blade. If you don't have a food processor that has one of those, you could just use a regular box grater like we did last time for the carrots. Um, I like doing it this way because it's fast and a little bit, a little bit neater. You don't end up with cauliflower shreds everywhere. All right, get that all put together. Put these in here. Sorry for the sound, you guys. I'm gonna try to be fast. turned it into nice grated cauliflower that is going to take the place of my rice. Okay, I'm going to pull it up here to the camera so you can maybe see a little bit. Got like some nice fluffy pieces there. You can also buy this in the frozen food section already made, um, already grated up. I like to do it fresh. I think the texture ends up better. Um, so now my pan is nice and hot and I'm going to start to cook it. One thing that makes cauliflower taste more like fried rice is the kind of oil we're gonna use. I'm using just a sesame seed oil there, I can show you. Um, it's available in the Asian food section of the grocery store, and I just want a little bit in the pan, okay? One thing I wanna show you, all right, got my hand a little bit of water. I don't know if you can hear that, but I can. Whenever I hit my pan with a couple just sprinklings of water from my hand, it sizzled. And it took a few seconds for those droplets to steam and dissipate. It didn't all of a sudden just like turn into steam immediately. That would be an indication that my pan is too hot and would burn my oil. And that does not taste good. And it didn't sit around there just kind of bubbling for a while. That would mean that my pan was not hot enough. And then my cauliflower might get soggy, okay? So we're just gonna hit this with, hit this pan, a little bit of sesame seed oil. That's what makes this taste like fried rice. We're gonna put about four cups of cauliflower into this pan, okay? I'm gonna stir it up, okay? Something that's very, very important when you're making cauliflower fried rice is that you don't want too much cauliflower in the pan because then your cauliflower is just gonna sit in a pile and it's gonna steam, it's not gonna fry. And so your texture is gonna be wrong. There's nothing wrong with steamed cauliflower, it's tasty, it just won't be like fried rice, okay? So to kind of show you, I use the biggest pan I have and it's just kind of making a thin layer. It's probably a half inch to three quarters of an inch deep there. Mm. And I can smell it. I can smell that sesame seed oil. It really smells like, um, like fried rice is supposed to. All right. Okay. Our base recipe today is um, coming from Iowa Girl Eats. It's a blog. Uh, this woman from Iowa has been keeping her blog for about five years. She was diagnosed with celiac disease 
which means that she is not able to eat foods that have wheat products in them. And so obviously this changed the way she was eating, and so she started a blog to kind of follow along on her journey. She started out with a lot of recipes that had substitutes for um, things that had wheat in them, like zucchini noodles for regular wheat noodles, and that kind of blossomed into just more of a veggie-based uh, blog. And I use a lot of her recipes often. One of my favorite things from her blog is actually her taco seasoning. You may or may not know that commercial taco seasoning actually has an ingredient in it that's got gluten. And so that was something she found that she needed to eliminate. And um, she makes her own taco seasoning. And it's delicious and low in salt. And it's what is in my spice cabinet. I make a mix. Okay. So this has been cooking. This cauliflower has been cooking for about minute, minute and a half. And one thing you can see, or rather, one thing I can see, is that the shreds are start the shreds of cauliflower are starting to get translucent. They're starting to look a little see-through. Okay? So I want to make sure that my cauliflower is not raw, because I don't want that crunch, but I want to make sure it's not too done either. Um, and so watching the color of the cauliflower is a great way to tell what, uh, how, how it's cooking. Another thing you can do while cooking cauliflower or other cruciferous vegetables like broccoli, like Brussels sprouts, like cabbage, is you can go by smell. All right, it, the, the effect is more pronounced whenever you're boiling or steaming these cruciferous vegetables, but you will notice whenever they are not quite done that they have a almost unpleasant sulfur type aroma. It stinks. That's why um, my people are like, ah, oh, it smells. Like, I don't, I don't like cabbage. I think it stinks. Or, ooh, Brussels sprouts, they're gross, they're stinky. Broccoli, cauliflower, I've heard all these things. Um, funniest thing, one time I actually heard a little kid um, tell his brother in, uh, I don't remember where we were, but I could overhear them talking. They were arguing and the little kid goes, ah, you smell like cabbage. And it just made me laugh and laugh because cabbage stinks. It does, especially if you don't cook it all the way through. So what I am smelling in my kitchen right now is that there was a bit of that sulfur cauliflower smell, but, um, it has dissipated. It's gone and my cauliflower is done. I'm gonna bring it up here to the camera so you can kind of see. The light is a little bit glaring, but you can kind of see some brown bits up in here, and you can see that it's not pure white anymore. It's a little bit more cream colored, a little bit more see-through, okay? And I can hear that there is a really nice sizzle, okay? So, what next? I'm going to move my cauliflower. I'm gonna keep stirring it around. And I am going to add my frozen uh, peas and carrot mix, right? There's like two thirds, three quarters of a cup there. Dump that right in. The pieces are small, they won't take long to cook. Um, really the peas are there for some color, as are the carrots. And I don't mind if the carrots stay a little crunchy. The cauliflower has been made to be soft and rice textured. And so having the carrots in there to give a little bit of a crunch is kind of a nice, it's kind of a nice um, layer to put in there. Kind of those two textures together is just really lovely. All right, we're gonna stir those up. And honestly, my, my peas are bright green. I don't care if the carrots are a little bit crunchy. I'm gonna move right along, okay? Next up, putting in a little bit of, um, of garlic. I like garlic, so I cut up uh, two big cloves here. Just gonna pop that right in there. If you wanted to add some spice, you could also add some red pepper flakes um, at this stage. All right, so we are going to stir that all up. I wanna cook it for just 20, 30 seconds so that that Mmm, that garlic is starting to turn fragrant, but I don't want it to burn. And to make sure it doesn't burn, I'm actually gonna turn my heat down a little bit. I'm working closer to medium now, medium low, all right? Depending on your, depending on your stove, you may find uh, you wanna go a little bit higher, a little bit uh, lower than I'm telling you. All right, 
The next, the other flavor that makes fried rice taste like fried rice is cooked eggs, okay? I put about four cups of cauliflower in here. A serving size is about one and a half to two cups, so I put in one egg per person. I'm gonna make a space in the middle of my pan, and so I've moved my cauliflower around to make a space there, you can see. And I am going to put a little more sesame seed oil in that well, just enough to cook my eggs in. All right, crack one, crack two, okay. And I wanna scramble them, all right? I want to cook my eggs in the middle of that well until they are fairly hard, okay? They're about two thirds of the way done right now. All right, those eggs are cooked, so I'm gonna stir to incorporate. part is done. Okay, so I am going to turn off my burner here and pick out my soy sauce. I always choose a low sodium soy sauce. Um, even though it says low sodium, it's still plenty salty, believe me. Our recipe is calling for about, our base recipe I should say, is calling for about three tablespoons of soy sauce. I just put enough in there to make it the right color, honestly. So we're gonna sprinkle it through. I'm zigzagging across my pan. Oh, that smells so good too. All right. Oh, so good. If you wanna, if you're feeling fancy and wanna kind of just heighten the presentation up a little bit, you can have a green, a green onion and a pair of kitchen shears and just Snap a little, snap a few ones in there. It just adds a different color green and it adds a nice fresh onion taste. Um, if I have them in the, in the refrigerator, I'll add them, um, but I think that the garlic is enough there, okay? So let me get a bowl of this so we can try it. All right. Here's my bowl of fried rice. I'm gonna show it to you guys. You can kind of see it's nice and brown. It smells great. It got that good cooked egg smell. I got the soy sauce and that sesame oil. That sesame oil is essential to making this dish actually taste like it's supposed to, like fried rice. All right, and just because we're friends, I'm gonna to try to eat this with chopsticks on Facebook Live. All right. Mmm. Mmm. It's hot. That's really hot. Mm. Oh man, I love this recipe. This recipe is so easy. Looking at the timestamp, we've been together for about 14 minutes and I've been talking a lot, but we went from ingredients to dinner in 14 minutes flat. If you wanted to make this a complete meal, it would work really well to put um, any kind of leftover protein that you have. Some leftover chicken would be nice. If you had some shrimp or um, even beef, it would be that would all be delicious. You'd want to add it right before you add um, the, the eggs, okay? Because you're gonna add the leftover already cooked meat to this, and so really it just needs to heat through. It would probably extend your cooking time by one to two minutes tops. I hope you have enjoyed this episode of uh, Cooking with Erin. Um, so it's a working title. We, we don't have a title for these videos yet. But if you there is something that you want to see made in my kitchen, I would love to cook it for you. Let us know in the comments and I hope you try this. I love this recipe and I really hope you do too. All right, take care guys. I'm gonna get real close. Mm -hmm.